guest is known as the most, one of the most colorful characters in sports. He has a new tell-all book called It's Good to Be King Sometimes. Here he is, folks, Jerry the King Lawler. <laughs> Good to be the king sometimes. Nice to see you, Jerry. Got a lot of fans here tonight. Yeah, that's my son up there with the cat, with the hat on. I want you really? to know. Yeah. Really? Hi, Hi Brian. How are you? Wow. Your son, and he couldn't get a better seat. No, that's the best he could do. Yeah. I'm sorry. Now, 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 I read the book last night. I loved it, by the way. It's, uh, you read it in one cho night? Yeah, chock-a-block full of anecdotes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I read it in one night. I'm not, okay. a, I'm not a wrestling fan. <laughs> I just... <laughs> He's going to start right off the bat. Yeah, That's no, okay. I'm kidding, That's okay. With you. I'm kidding with you. Now, now, you say in your book that you have no memory of a lot of the things that went on. It must have been difficult for you to write the book. <laughs> I didn't say I have no memory. I right. said, I, I, said I, I get hit on the, I've gotten hit on the head a lot during my career. So yeah. some yeah. brain cells are gone. But, uh, you know, I, I had to do some, actually some research and, right. and, and, and call in some friends and some other wrestlers and check with my mom and verify some stories. And right. I could have right. actually used those kids to help me do some spelling, yeah, as a good. matter of fact, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I thought that, you know, when you asked him how to spell sad, I thought he had it wrong. Because down in Memphis, you know, it was like, my mama's sad, I should be a wrestler. So it would be S-A-I-D. <laughs> you know. But anyway. It's S-A-I-D. Yeah. Now, how, how did you become, uh, you didn't start as, a, uh, start as the king. You weren't the king when you started wrestling. You, you got that moniker later on. How did you get that title? Well, actually, it, 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 it came about, you know, you see, you see the wrestlers on, on the shows where they uh, try to intimidate each other. Before right. a match, you go out on TV and you do interviews. And um, I, was, I was in a big series of matches in, uh, down in Memphis with, uh, with the guy that was the local favorite at the time. He was the big shot. His guy was right. named Fabulous Jackie Fargo. And he'd been, the, he'd been the top wrestler for a long time. And just trying to use some colorful speech. I, I just said one day, you know, Fargo, You've been the king around here for a long time, but you're looking at the kid that's going to knock you off your throne. And yeah. I went on, I won that match, and, and as I was leaving the ring, a couple of kids in the audience said, hey, you're the king now, you're the king. And the, the, the following week, I was wrestling down in Atlanta, Georgia, another wrestler down there by the name of Bobby Shane. Yeah. Uh, he, he was, I, I see this guy come in, and he's wrestling as King Bobby Shane. He has a crown, he has a red robe and everything, and uh, I just thought to myself, I said, this would be great if I show yeah. up next week in Memphis with, this, with the king outfit. Right. So I asked Bobby where he got the crown, where he got the robe, and um, he said, you got to order this stuff and it takes weeks, but as coincidence would have it, he was leaving the next day for a tour of Australia, and he said, you know what, Jerry, I'm not going to take this stuff with me. You take the crown, you take the robe, go to Memphis and wear it, and, uh, and I'll get it back from you when I get back. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, before Bobby Shane got back, he was killed in a plane crash. Wow. wow. And so I was left with the crown, I was left with the robe, I went out the next week, and uh, uh, I've been the king ever since. Wow. Remind me uh, not to loan you anything. There you go. <laughs> now, uh, of all the storylines, all the angles, which was the best one you ever worked? I think I know the answer to this, but what do you think? I think the Andy Kaufman deal. Andy was, Kaufman. Uh, Andy Kaufman, fantastic. anybody remember Andy Kaufman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. That was in 1983. Yeah. And of course, uh, and, Andy, was, Andy was so great. And, and I still, to this day, that's 20 years ago, I still have people coming up to me and say, you really, you really hated Andy Kaufman, didn't you? I mean, well, you, you really pulled it knocked it beautifully. That. Well, uh, you know what? It's it's more so than me. Andy pulled it off beautifully yeah. because here was a guy who was no experience in wrestling, but he came in and 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 as a tribute to his his timing and his genius and everything, he pulled it off so well. And 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 he and I, you know, we we just had an agreement that we wouldn't that we wouldn't let anybody in on this. Yeah. I didn't tell anybody in wrestling. He didn't tell anybody in in, in his end of entertainment. And it, that's why you know we went on the Letterman show. Right. Dave was not in on what happened there, and and I think that's why it it um, it went over not only so well, but why it was lasted so long. It was still one of the most amazing pieces of television I ever saw. I remember watching it that night, and I, I bought it hook, line, and sinker. And I, I, I love to watch. There. I love to watch it. Uh, I mean, as often as I can, because I watch Dave. I don't yeah. watch myself. I don't watch Andy. Right. I watch Dave's reaction. He was a nervous wreck. He was a nervous wreck. He had no idea what was going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, as I tell in the book, I, I really, in reality, Andy and I didn't, we didn't plan the entire thing. 
we knew we didn't want to do what they've asked us to do, right. which was uh, when we got there, they said, uh, you know, we, we, you guys are going to be on two segments. The first segment, we want you to be sort of antagonistic towards each other. The second segment, Andy's going to apologize to you for making fun of wrestling. You apologize for hurting Andy. And then Andy's going to sing what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Yeah. And yeah. that's what they thought we were going to do. And of course, uh, we, Andy and I talked a little before the show, and he said, he actually said, he said, well, what do you think would happen if you slug me? Yeah. And I said, Andy, we, I, first of all, I'll probably get arrested. They won't show, the, they won't air the broadcast, and, and I don't think that'll work. And he said, ah, you're probably right, but, you know, I, I just hate to do what we're going to do. So we really went out there, yeah. and I went out there knowing that he, what he wanted me to do, and, uh, but I, I, I had reservations. But then finally, we, we, I waited till the very last second, and the band actually started playing to, to get us off the, off the thing, and I just yeah. said, what the heck? I stood up and I just haul up, I slapped the taste out of his mouth. Oh yeah, right was, over out of the great. chair onto the floor. Oh, it was amazing. Dave yeah. almost had a stroke, and, uh, yeah. and 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 of course it was just it was uh, it was mayhem after that. And then yeah. then Andy comes back, and where I thought you know I realized I guess they are going to show this thing because they they got everybody calmed down. They brought me back out onto the set and said try to wrap this thing up, and then Andy comes in from the side and starts this, this tirade. I mean, the... Uh, like he had Tourette's, it was unbelievable. Well, I mean, the worst the curse <laughs> words, I mean, you know, the, it was just like unbelievable. So I'm, I'm thinking, Andy, you're blowing this whole thing. So I try, I try to like show with some body language, like, Andy, please quit, you know, stop the deal. But I mean, anyway, he's, he's, he's this stream of uh, curse words and everything. And uh, then he threw the coffee at me and I jumped up, chased him again, and, and off he went. They hustled me out of the studio, and I went back to the hotel without speaking to Andy, without speaking to Dave, and still didn't know if they were going to show the thing. And yeah. I turned it on 11 o'clock that night, and there's, there's the whole thing. All oh, they did was uh, beep Just it out. And it's Culminating, of course, history. in you playing yourself in the uh, Jim Carrey movie, Man on the Moon. Man on the Moon. Did you? Yeah. Anybody see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was great. Now, you, know, you spent uh, a lot of time on the road, I mean, and, you, I and, and, you, and coming up in wrestling, even prior to the uh, WWF, which became the WWE, you must have done a lot of crazy things. We had things. to get you the must... F out. It's uh, yeah. WWE now, of course. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. people were choking ducks. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of crazy things must have gone on on the road when you were starting out. Well, you know, one of the big differences in, in wrestling today as opposed to, like, when I started out, all the trips were made by car. Now we fly right. everywhere and yeah. all over the world. Uh, at that time, wrestling was regionalized or in smaller territories. And, and, yeah. and where I lived, of course, we wrestled in Memphis, Tennessee at an arena every Monday night, every Tuesday night, every, I mean, every Tuesday of the year, we, we drove up to Louisville, Kentucky. And then uh, on Wednesday, we were in Evansville, Indiana, and Thursday, Nashville, and Friday, Tupelo, Mississippi. So every day you were driving to these different cities. Right. And yeah, there were, there were uh, you know, I mean, there were a lot of crazy, uh, crazy things that would happen on the road. And, and some wrestlers were, some wrestlers were uh, known for doing crazy things. This, the, the guy I was telling you about, the fabulous Jackie Fargo. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we, I, we, would, we would be driving down one time, Jerry Jarrett and I were driving on the way back to Nashville, and we are just driving along, and, and all of a sudden, Fargo zooms by us, going about maybe 20 or 30 miles faster than we were. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, go ahead, Jackie. And so we've gone far enough up the road where we forget that, uh, you know, that he's passed us, and all of a sudden, we look on the side of the road as we're going by, and uh, here's Jackie Fargo standing on the side of the road, completely naked, hitchhiking, right? He's gone up, he pulls off the side of the road, and he gets completely naked, and he's uh, hitchhiking as we go by. Now, you, the king of wrestling, did you have any encounters with the king of rock and roll? Did you ever meet Elvis? Actually, I, I actually did not get to meet Elvis, right. but um, right, before, right before he died, uh, I, had, I had a manager that, uh, named Sam Bass that, that got killed in a car accident. I mean, not only funny things, but we had some, there was some uh, yeah, big risk stuff. with uh, traveling on the road. Sam got killed one night in a car accident going back from a match uh, in Memphis to Nashville. And not long after that, I, I took another guy as a, um, as a manager or valet, so to speak, and to be in my corner. And this guy was telling me on a trip one day, he said, you know, we were just talking, he was telling me, he said, my brother is like, um, my brother's like the president of the Elvis Presley International Fan Club. He hangs out at Graceland all the time. Right. I said, yeah, well, really? I said, so he knows everybody out there? He said, yeah. And I said, well, you know what would be great? I said, why don't you get him to talk to somebody out there? He said, Elvis is into this karate stuff, and, and, and you know, I'm doing the king of wrestling. I said, why don't you see if he would be interested in having like this mixed match at the Coliseum to see who is really the king of Memphis, the karate against the wrestling. Yeah. And, and I'm really thinking, I'm just, you know, that this guy doesn't really know anybody in the Elvis family, right? <laughs> About three days later, I, I go to Louisville, Kentucky. I come home that night, and my wife at the time says, you had a phone call today. I said, yeah, okay. She said, some guy said he was Vernon Presley called. 
Yeah, Elvis is dead. Yeah. yeah, and so I said, really? And she said, yeah, he said he'll call back tomorrow. Next day, I have to, I'm waiting by the phone, I, but then I finally I have to leave. I go to Evansville, Indiana. I get back that night. She said, Vernon Presley called again. I said, this can't be Vernon Presley. So the next day, I'm off. Sure enough, about 12 o'clock, phone rings. It is Vernon Presley. Yeah. And so he says, you know, uh, we were talking to the young man, and he told us the idea you had. I told it to Elvis, and he said he loves it. And uh, he said, but I'm going to be honest with you, Jerry. He said, Elvis right now is, uh, he says, not in too good a shape, but he's working out, and he's going to start getting in shape for this big upcoming tour. Yeah. Right after we finish the tour, uh, he's going to get in touch with you, and we'll do the match. Passed away. Of course, he passed away before he yeah. did the tour. Yeah. Sad, man. But, but uh, yeah, that would have been, yeah. been great. Well, great you think book, it could have took him? Oh, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On your worst day. <laughs> right, okay. All right. It's, uh, here's the book, folks. It's good to be the king sometimes. Get out there and buy it. Very interesting read. Thank you, Jerry. Pleasure to have you here.